What if school wasn't about passing a test and getting good grades? What if school was all about learning? What if learning was about satisfying curiosity, filling in the gaps of our knowledge? When I was in school, social studies class was a combination of reading from a textbook, filling in worksheets, coloring maps, and the occasional project. These activities were designed to help me remember information and pass a test. As I look back, I struggle to see how the things I did in social studies class taught me the skills I needed to truly study the world around me. With expanded access to information through technology, students no longer need to focus on remembering information. Students need to learn the skills that allow them to find information when they need it. The social studies method can be used to help students answer their own questions. The social studies method is similar to the scientific method. It gives students steps to follow toward learning and drawing conclusions. The steps are inquiry, research, analysis and synthesis, and presentation. Students need to be made aware of the fact that they actually already know the learning process. Learning starts with wondering and asking questions followed by finding those answers through investigating different sources. Students can begin to take real ownership of their learning by answering their own questions. The method helps students realize that learning is something that they naturally do already. Middle school girls have this method down. They start with questions. Who does that boy like? And what happened at the dance last Friday? And why don't these people hang out with me? Little do these girls know, but they actually are already practicing the first step, inquiry. Teachers can work with students during this inquiry step to learn how to ask more relevant questions. Asking questions is a pretty easy skill, but students need to learn to find questions that are actually worth knowing and worth spending some time to find the answer. Most people wouldn't care who some 13-year-old boy likes but to that eighth grader, the wrong answer could mean the end of the world. Sometimes our students need a little direction and help seeing the bigger picture. Given some time, it's pretty easy for students to figure out what it is that's actually relevant to a given topic. Does it really matter what color Abraham Lincoln was wearing when he gave the Gettysburg Address? Or is it even more important to know what he said and why he said it? The next step is finding the best resources that can answer your question. The teenage girl might ask her friends for some information about a boy she likes, but better sources would probably be the boy's best friends. If she really got daring, she might go to the best source of information at all, the boy himself. Finding the sources is the research step of the social studies method. Students learn to differentiate between primary and secondary sources. They learn that one source may provide only one part of the story. Seeing from multiple perspectives gives a clearer picture of the true story. And once we have those sources, we need to learn to determine what pieces of information help us answer our question. Students need to be able to analyze their sources to pick out the information that satisfies their wonderings. Students need to learn skills for looking closely at sources and pulling out the information. Analysis can be hard though, because sources don't always give us clear answers to our questions. Teenage sources are notorious for giving way more information than is actually relevant to the question. Textbooks, websites, and documents can be guilty of the same superfluity of details. The second part of this step is synthesis. Once we pull documents apart using analysis, we must pull the details back together through synthesis. This is where we take what we have learned and try to come up with a reasonable answer to our question. A good graphic organizer is sometimes very handy as we try to make sense of all the information. Synthesis can be tricky though, especially when we have sources that reflect different perspectives. Students need to recognize when information conflicts and learn strategies to help them find the best and most complete answer. Synthesis is about making sense of all the details. 
When we've found the best answer to our question, the final step is figuring out what to do with that information. We should probably find a way to teach others what we have learned. With social information, though, we need to be very careful how we present what we know. Slip-ups in this area could result in new problems with your social status. In academic or business settings, presenting our knowledge might be done through reports, presentations, diagrams, or other media. Not all of these are appropriate in every situation. A report would be a terrible way to share information about art or photography. Students need to learn the clearest way to share their newfound knowledge with others. In review, the social studies method is a process with steps that help students answer their own questions. Inquiry, research, analysis and synthesis, and presentation are already familiar to most students, but they don't always recognize them or know how to do them well. Teachers can teach their students skills within each of the steps to help students get the best answer to their questions. Hopefully, through this process of answering questions and learning, it leads our students to new questions and more learning. The content in this method is interchangeable so that students can apply the process to whatever they want to learn. The method removes the focus on memorizing content by teaching students to focus on the process of learning. By using the social studies method, students will be prepared to learn and grow in the 21st century.